we now move to question 4a on the CXC paper. And it says the function f is defined as f of x equal 2x plus 7 over 5. Part 1 says find the value of f of 4 plus f of minus 4. Now there are two things you probably need to say here. My x value represents my domain values. And those are the values that I plug inside of the function to get out f of x, which represents my range. So when it says find the value of f of 4, what it means is that in the place of x, I'm going to be putting 4. And also I'm going to be putting minus 4. And this is something we can do simultaneously. So this would imply 2 times 4 plus 7 all over 5. Plus, if I put in minus 4, I'm going to have 2 times minus 4 plus 7 all over 5. All right, and we just simply work these out. 2 times 4 plus 7 would give me 15 over 5 plus 2 times negative 4 would be negative 8 plus 7, negative 1 over 5. Now, there are several ways we could go about doing this. We could simplify the 15 over 5, but since these are two fractions and my denominators are the same, we can just simplify the numerator. So I'm going to have 15 plus negative 1, which is going to give me 14 and I put back that over 5. Now we can leave the answer as an improper fraction as 14 over 5. That would be my exact value. Part 2 of the question of part A is divided into two parts, part A again and part B. All right, and part A of it says calculate the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9. What does this mean? Bear in mind that x represents my domain value. So I want a domain value that would produce a value of 9 in my range. Right? So we simply take the function, which is f of x, and we equate it to 9. Now remember that my function was 2x plus 7 over 5. So technically, this implies that 2x plus 7 over 5 is equal to 9. And we can transpose this just like a normal function, right? So we need to find the value of x. So we're going to have to transpose this. So we can start by getting rid of the 5. So we would multiply both sides by 5. So we would end up with 2x plus 7 equal 45. All right? We're going to have 2x equal, the 7 comes over, so we have 45 minus 7. So I'm going to end up with 2x equal 38. And of course, to get x, we divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 19. So therefore, the value of x for which f of x is equal to 9 is equal to 19. That's the value of x. The second part of this question is actually pretty interesting. And it says, hence or otherwise, determine the value of f inverse of 9. Now, what should you know? Whenever you inverse a function, domain becomes a range of the function, and a range actually becomes the domain of the function. What do I mean by that? In the previous question, you were actually find, asked to find the value of x for which f of x was equal to 9. Now we are being asked to find f inverse of 9. So this 9 value that is here inside of the inverse function would have initially been a part of my range. All right, so whenever you invert the function, the domain and the range becomes inverted, or they switch. So the domain becomes a range, and the range becomes a domain. So the shortcut for doing this is that we don't have to go through the inverse and then plug 9 into the function. What we can simply do is to take the original function, which is f of x, and equate it to 9. But the beauty about this is that we have done it already in the previous question. So I would have f of x equal to 9, all right? So therefore, since we solved this already, we got x to be equal to 19. Good. So this is going to imply now that f inverse of 9 is actually equal to 19. We now move to question 4b. And it says the graph below shows two straight lines, L1 and L2. 
L1 intersects the x and y axes at 4, 0 and 0, 2 respectively. What does that mean? It means that it cuts the x axis at a point 4, 0 and the y axis at 0, 2. L2 intersects the x and y axes at 1.50 and 0 minus 3 respectively. As you can see from the diagram here, this is line 1 and this is line 2 here. Now the first part of the question, which is B part 1, says determine the equation of L1. Now let me just go down a bit here. To determine the equation, we're going to start by writing down the general equation of a line, um, which is going to be y equal mx plus c. Now we know that c is a y-intercept, which is where line 1 cuts the y-axis, which you know to be 2 here, and m is the gradient. Now we could determine the gradient from looking at the graph by counting, or we can actually work out the gradient based on the points that were given here. So for line 1, we got two points, and let me just write them here to the side. We got 4, 0, and we also got 0, 2. Now, as we know it, the gradient m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, we can determine what x1, y1 is. So we could call the first set a point x1, y1. We could call the second set x2, y2. So my gradient m would be equal to, and y2 here is 2, y1 is 0. So it's going to be 2 minus 0 all over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is 4, 0, minus 4. This actually works down to be m equal negative a half, all right? Now, we have pretty much everything we need to write down the equation of the line. All right, so this is negative a half. So we're going to have y equal negative a half x. And we said that the line cuts the y-axis at 2. So negative a half x plus 2. And that is the equation of line 1. Pretty straightforward. We could also use the graph, look at it, and we could have counted off and also find the gradient. All right, so it's technically speaking rise over run. Either one works pretty well. And then part 2, B part 2 says what is the gradient of line 2, which is L2, given that L1 and L2 are perpendicular. Now bear in mind that we found the gradient of the first line to be negative a half. So what is the gradient of line 2? What do we know? We know that when two lines are perpendicular, the gradient of one is a negative reciprocal of the other. So if the gradient of line one was negative a half, if I reciprocate that, I'm going to get two over one, and we negate that. So we end up with a positive two. So the gradient of line one was negative a half. So the gradient of line two must be the negative reciprocal. So we can write a statement here that says that gradient of L2 equal positive 2. So we reciprocate the negative a half and we negate it, which gives me a positive 2 here.